history is full of firsts. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Many of those firsts shaped our way of life. For 70 years, KPRC Channel 2 has been proud to be pioneers in shaping television and Houston history. Isn't it good to work for a place that has a sense of history? And indeed it is. See, taking the president from spring to compensation. If you have something you'd like Channel 2 Investigates to check out, call the tip line at 713-223-TIPS or email investigates at click2houston.com. Channel 2 News begins right now with breaking news. Happening right now, Precinct 4 deputy constables are on the scene of a homicide. Details are slowly coming into our newsroom. What we've learned in the case, straight ahead. Plus, it is Super Bowl Sunday. Look at the last minute preps being done to make sure tonight's game goes off without a hitch. And we've got some ideas for your Super Bowl bash. All right. Well, who knew he was this funny? J.J. Watt goes from the bright lights at NRG Stadium to the bright lights of the Big Apple mm. with his appearance last night on Saturday Night Live. Big and woke, big and woke. I'm a humongous sensitive oak. Wow, even a little frozen going on. We'll have Look, more, he on, sings. more on his performance, his tribute to Kobe Bryant, and a chance for you to tell us which skit was your favorite. <laughs> Good Sunday morning. I'm sorry, we, I did not stay up for that. I Too didn't late. stay up either. How about you? I can't I'm wait. looking <laughs> forward to the sound. I mean, we'll, we'll be able to see it here we'll watch for the it first here. time. All right. <laughs> can't, can't wait. <laughs> Maybe we'll have time later on the day to go ahead and pull Did it up. Did you know that it's Groundhog Day today? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We know it's Groundhog Day. It's all kind of stuff. You get thousands and thousands of people in Pennsylvania right now mm -hmm. waiting to see that rodent to be able to look and see what's going on. Who cares and what he said? There's a live shot right there. How about that? Gobbler's Knob. And they're all waiting. Phil. Pull Phil out there. And Phil's going to say, hey, spring. That's what I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah, unless he says spring, then let's hear him out. Yeah, no, yeah, that's not going to happen. Hey, let's take a look outside. We're warmer than we were yesterday, more comfortable, I think. Not much in the way of wind, again, but we're in the upper 40s as opposed to the lower 40s. Remember, we had a couple of 30s yesterday. Now 54 degrees in Galveston, 47 at Hobby Airport. Mostly clear skies. We still have a couple of 30s on the map, 30s, 40s, and 50s. The, long, the closer you get to the coast, the warmer it gets. And this afternoon, mostly sunny, mid-70s. We were in the upper 60s yesterday. Today mid-70s, and then tomorrow, 70s and some afternoon showers will be in play. Here are the other temperatures. There's that 34 in Columbus I was telling you about in Conroe as well, but you see a lot of 40s and 50s along the coast there with the winds now coming out of the southwest. That means it's going to warm it up a little bit more for us this afternoon. A quick warm-up. We still have a lot of dry air as well. Exact track radar showing some of that. Dr uh, tranquil conditions for us. You can see the clouds right there. Just a few clouds. They're going to be streaming in a little bit more, and we'll see more of that tomorrow 
tomorrow as we start to see some showers in the mix. 49 for us, 47 Dallas, 30s in the panhandle. We're going to see much colder air coming in over the next several days. We'll have that next big cold front. 64 degrees is the normal high, 74 to 78 for us around the region today. So hour by hour, 40s, going to go up about 17 degrees within about three hours or so with that dry air around. Then we're going to be in those mid 70s. 10 day forecast will time out the next rain and the colder temperatures that will return and remind us that, yeah, it is February, so winter is still here. Guys, coming up. That's a reminder. All right, thank you, Kimber. I'll see you in a bit. Now back to that breaking news we mentioned at the top of our newscast out of Atascacita. Precinct 4 deputy constables are working a homicide at this hour there. The deadly shooting happened sometime after 2 o'clock this morning near Treeline Drive and Atasca South Streets. When officers arrived on scene, they found one person with gunshot wounds. That person was taken to the hospital and later died. Right now, we have a crew that just arrived there on the scene. We'll have a live report coming up in our second half hour. New this morning, one person is dead after police say he was hit by an SUV while trying to cross the Gulf Freeway. It happened near Griggs Road in southwest Houston. Investigators say they haven't identified the victim because his injuries are so severe. But they said the area where the accident happened is poorly lit. The driver of the SUV stayed at the scene. Police do not believe alcohol was a factor in that accident. The first case of the coronavirus on the East Coast has been confirmed. Meanwhile, the Defense Department is designating military bases across the country that could house a thousand quarantine patients. This all comes as there are more deaths. Sarah Harmon reports. A rapidly evolving public health emergency, with Massachusetts confirming its first case of coronavirus in Boston, the eighth in the U.S. so far. The patient, a UMass Boston student in his 20s who visited Wuhan, China. The Department of Defense approving future quarantine centers at military bases across the country with space for the nearly 1,000 Americans still stuck in Wuhan. They told us to monitor ourselves and if we feel any symptoms at all to report it through the CDC. Banning most foreigners who visited China recently from entering the United States and requiring Americans who visited Hubei province to undergo a 14-day quarantine, including the 195 Americans evacuated early Earlier this week, Delta Airlines accelerating plans, halting all flights to and from China after Sunday. We're nowhere near as prepared as we need to be. There are weaknesses both within the U.S., but especially around the world. So far, at least 11,000 people are infected in 24 countries, but concern is growing. The true number could be much higher. A new study predicts as many as 75,000 people could be infected in Wuhan alone. It's certainly much less severe than SARS. On the other hand, it's spreading more rapidly than SARS spread. A rapid rise in infection, alarming officials. We're really probably at the tip of the iceberg in understanding how contagious it really might be. Around the world, the race to halt the spread is on. As fear spreads in the U.S., the coronavirus may soon reach a tipping point. And that was Sarah Harmon reporting. And now to the story many in Houston will probably be talking about today and maybe laughing about. Yeah, chuckling about Houston's favorite Texan making a huge debut on Saturday Night Live. Of course, we're talking about our J.J. Watt. The football superstar did Houston proud last night on the famous comedy sketch show. He, se he seemed to fit right in, really, with all the cast members delivering those lines that were laugh out loud funny. But everyone who's a fan of the show knows you have to start out on the right foot, and that begins with the monologue. When I found out that I was going to be hosting SNL, I told some of my teammates, and not to fulfill a stereotype, but at least half of them asked me, what day do they tape that? <laughs> <laughs> this morning, we want to know which skit that you liked the most from SNL and J.J. Watt. Was it the Madden skit, My Fair Bigfoot, or Robbie? Yeah, go to our website at clicktohouston.com. Vote in our Click to Vote poll. You can see it right here at the bottom. We just started. We'll have the final results ahead in our 10 a.m. newscast. We have a few hours for you guys to vote. Go out there and get that vote. After all the fun, Watt expressed his gratitude on Twitter, of course. He tweeted this out after the show, saying, what an unbelievable experience. Thank you. 
And as for the viewers' thoughts, one reaction online seemed to be pretty great. Here's what one fan had to say after watching Watt's debut. He tweeted, SNL with J.J. Watt was on point. His comedic timing was awesome. Good job, man. Hopefully there are more where that came from. Mm -hmm. Hey, well, the countdown is on this morning to start of Super Bowl 54. The Chiefs and the 49ers going head-to-head -head for the coveted Lombardi Trophy. Here's a live look, in fact, from Hard Rock Stadium in Miami, Florida. As the final touches are being made for the big game, a look at just how much fans are shelling out for their seats. NBC's Jake Gray reports from Miami. For fans, it's been a week of parties. It's awesome. It's been a blast. For players, a week of practice. There could be any one play that, that wins or loses you the game, um, and I think our team understands that. Making sure their bodies and minds are ready for the big game. For me, it's about just kind of managing my emotions, going out there with a clear head, uh, with the right mindset to go out there and play my best football. But now... All the preparation and pregame hype is over. It's game day in Miami. For a lot of fans, a dream come true. I wake up Monday morning and it was again like, the Chiefs are going to the Super Bowl! <laughs> but that bucket list purchase can cost a bucket full of money. So the average price is somewhere around $6,300, $6,400. Prices this year pushed by fans who haven't been to the big game in a long time. The Niners travel well have an incredibly widespread fan base across the United States. Um, and the Chiefs haven't been to a Super Bowl in, all, in more than 50 years. And so when you add those factors in, two incredibly passionate fan bases. The experience. As a kid, I've always dreamed about going to the Super Bowl, but even seeing my team playing in the Super Bowl is a dream come true. For many, priceless. Jay Gray, NBC News, Miami. What an experience. Ahead in this newscast, we continue our Super Bowl coverage with a look at the ads that we'll have you talking tomorrow. That's all ahead in our second half hour. Well, a student who had been missing for two weeks has now been found. Coming up, where volunteers found her. Next, we're learning more about the certifications for the pilot who flew the helicopter that crashed that killed Kobe Bryant and eight others. Plus, we have a look at how J.J. Watt honored that basketball legend. This morning, the latest into the investigation into the crash that killed basketball star Kobe Bryant, his daughter Gianna, and seven others. Sources close to the investigation tell NBC News that while the pilot, Ara Zabayan, was certified to fly in low visibility, the charter company, Island Express Helicopters, was not. A former pilot for Island Express says that is common for companies in Southern California with typically clear skies. The public makeshift memorial outside the Staples Center honoring Kobe Bryant and the eight others will be dismantled after the Super Bowl today. As the tributes continue to come in for the late basketball legend, you can add this one from J.J. Watt last night on SNL. At the end of the show, when he gave his thank yous, you can see he wore a number, one of, uh, one of Kobe's jerseys, number 24. He also, uh, Brandt's famous hook shot, mimicked the famous hook shot while the credits were rolling. Well, the search for a missing student from the University of St. Thomas is over this morning. That's because that she's been found safe at a women's shelter. According to Texas EquiSearch, Angela Wen was found yesterday. Volunteers spent several hours searching for her before making the discovery. She had been missing for nearly two weeks. A Fighting on the basketball court, yes. Up, the player from the Houston area ejected from a basketball game after he was accused of, of biting his opponent. CT. Good morning and welcome into the Xfinity Sports Desk. Here's what's happening. Well, the day is finally here. Get your chicken wings and big screen TVs ready. The Super Bowl is taking place in Miami. Our Ari Alexander caught up with the Texans' DJ Reader, who was nominated for the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award. Tell me about the outfit. Um, you know, got a little brown going on. My boy stitched by Mitch. My shoe came in tied, so I got to fix that. But man, one of my best friends from high school and at Mitchell School, he made it for me. So that having this honor being the Walter Payton Man of the Year nominee for our team is just it's a true blessing. You know, never in a million years I thought I'd be in a place like this, so it's cool. 
When the Cougs play Cincinnati, it's usually a battle, and yesterday was no different. Kelvin Sampson's tie came off. There were so many lead changes, and there were allegations of biting. Yes, I said biting. Let's take a look at the video. The Cougs did start out hot. Nothing but net here for Quentin Grimes, but Cincinnati caught up. Cumberland to Williams here with the slam dunk, and this is when you could kind of feel the momentum change. But this, this play is what everyone's talking about. Jero trying to do too much, a loose ball, and while he was fighting for it, the refs say they saw him biting. Kelvin Sampson fought it, but Jero was ejected with a flagrant two foul. Al Cougs lose this one by two points. The announcer said it was a strange game, and I completely agree. All right. Well, make sure you stick with us today and set your DVR to record Sports Sunday tonight. Have a wonderful morning. You weren't kidding about yesterday. I really loved yesterday. I'm sure a lot oh, of people did. Perfect. Man. It was very uncomfortable for me. You know, people oh, really? stuffing $100 <laughs> oh, bills in yeah, my pocket. I was walk. Hey, people, hey, you know, what can I do? <laughs> <laughs> they, we just, do they take this pay the weatherman thing a little bit too far? Too I'm just seriously. kidding. This is a free service we'll that we offer. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. We'll let Frank and Britta and those guys give you the bad news. I'll give you the good news. <laughs> and the good news from Teddy and Timmy is that they're pulling for France, San Francisco tonight. <laughs> oh, look at you guys. I know. They're ready. Right. They're ready and we'll they're 49. See. Of course, you know, you see, you know, Teddy still has his Texans jersey on. That's wishful <laughs> thinking. But they're both pulling for the 49ers. So I, you know, you know who's gonna argue with them? Look outside here. Their forecast for the game. It's in the Miami Gardens area. Game time, 65 degrees. Winds out of the northwest at 9 miles an hour. The chance for precipitation, zero. And they're glad about that. They had a lot of rain over the last couple of days. For us, you look at exact track radar. A few clouds starting. The high clouds starting to come into the area, but most of us are really going to be sunny skies today. Kaplan Sinus relief camera shot, 47 southwest winds at 6 miles an hour. When you see southwest winds, it typically is going to be a warmer wind throughout the day for us today. 49 Bush, 46 at Katy, 47 Sugarland, 54 in Galveston. So that's the warm spot. We still have really dry air. When you see dew points in the 30s and 40s, that's really dry air, and that lets us heat up pretty quickly. We expect we'll heat up some 15 to 17 degrees in about three hours once that sun comes up. The wind's coming from the southwest, about six and three miles an hour. So a pretty comfortable wind speed, if you will. Surface features, not a whole lot going on. We're going to be looking at this area up to the northwest. That's where our next front and storm is going to materialize. Right now, we've got this warm flow from the Pacific. That's going to help us warm up from the 70s, the mid-70s today, to the upper 70s going into the day before this front actually comes on through. But this is what we're going to be looking at. A future cast model, put this in motion, all of this. By the way, they're expecting a foot of snow in the Colorado area in the 24-hour period coming up. That's where that all that blue is right there going into Tuesday morning. You notice we have the showers that are going through on Wednesday. And look, wintry precip to the north. Question is will we get some of that right now it doesn't appear that we will but there we're going to keep our eyes out on that because if any conditions change that may happen with the rain and the colder air inter intersecting it could be an issue going in tighter here Wednesday afternoon temperatures will be dropping through the day on Wednesday as well and there's that wintry precip up to the north and then look here this look Thursday morning very early a little leftover straggle of precipitation it's really far off but this there's a chance that some of that may happen we'll keep an eye on all of that and then we have a clearing skies until we get to Sunday and then going into Monday, more rain in the forecast the following Monday. So that's a trend going forward for us today. 74 degrees, it's going to be really nice, warming up pretty quickly here, that mid-70s at about 3 o'clock this afternoon. You look at the 10-day forecast, 40% chance on Monday, that's Monday afternoon, evening. And then Tuesday, about a 30% chance. Wednesday, notice it's not much of a temperature difference because the, wind, the front's going to be coming in and the temperature will be dropping throughout so we don't have much of a variance there and on the back side of that back into the 30s when winter arrives on Thursday with sunny skies going into Saturday and Sunday before we have clouds and some more rain coming in on Monday so the 10-day forecast looks like it should look it's uh, on the winter at least after Wednesday but between today and tomorrow those warm temperatures 78 on Tuesday oh my coming up this morning on Houston Newsmakers the incoming Rice University provost on why his color or circumstances never led to roadblocks. If I listened to people when I was in high school or, or otherwise that, uh, that may have thought that I couldn't do it, don't let anybody tell you you can't do it. You, you absolutely can do it. You have to work hard, um, but you can absolutely do it. 
The black history being made at Rice University. We'll talk about that and much more coming up on Houston Newsmakers this morning at 1030. Coming up in about four hours. Thank you so much, Kim Brown. Well, Super Bowl Sunday is here. Yeah, but it won't be the only game to watch today. Next, a look at the participants in this year's Doggy Bowl. What? These cuties will make you howl with laughter. All right, let's take a live look here at Punxsutawney Phil. They're getting ready to let that... Uh oh, call him What's a hedgehog. He's not a hedgehog. He's not a hedgehog. He's a rodent. He's a groundhog. <laughs> Let's see. Mr. Bill Dealey. Oh, they're still announcing. All right, we'll come back and get a check when he comes out and see if it's going to be spring or winter for another six weeks. Be back. They just pulled him out. All right, this is Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania. Groundhog's Day. Let's listen in. Let's listen in. It's winter, one is summer. What do you think, buddy? Huh? Spring, 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 spring. spring. I don't know. What do you think, buddy? Huh? I don't know. What do you think? The closest one to you? <laughs> what do you pick? We did set a record. It's so cold, they want him to hurry up. <laughs> they just they just tried to choose for him. Well, what'd he choose? Here you go. You just put it up to my pose. He is cute. <laughs> <laughs> hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. Now this second day of February 2nd, 2020, 02, 02, 2020. The 134th annual trek of the Punxsutawney Groundhog Club. Punxsutawney Phil, the seer of seers, prognosticator of all prognosticators, was awakened from his burrow to the cheers of thousands upon thousands of his faithful followers from around the world. In Groundhog Ease, Phil directed the inner circle to his prediction scroll, which reads, it's a Phil fantastic day in these beautiful woods. Thousands and thousands in the Knob neighborhood. You faithful followers are the best, it's true. You, who wouldn't want neighbors just like you? Now my forecast on a day that's a palindrome uh -oh. will cause some to cheer and some to moan. So do I hope you think it's neighborly for there is no shadow of me. Yes. Spring will be early. Oh, it's wow. a certainty. <laughs> wow, that's Six. like the first time in how many years? Early spring, spring, ladies and gentlemen. And he's always right, some of the time. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Let him go back to bed. <laughs> we'll be right back. Not today. Live from KPRC, this is Channel 2 News Today. All right, good morning. Super Bowl Sunday is here. From the security measures in place for the big game to the ads that will have you talking, we've got you covered. Are those game day parties going to be held outside? Wow, what a shot. Look at that live shot. Thank you, meteorologist Campbell Marshall. <laughs> Ahead of, uh, you know, as we just saw Punxsutawney Phil, we know that your forecast is the accurate one. Yeah. <laughs> and keeping up with the football theme, J.J. Watt makes a splash on Saturday Night Live. Ahead, more looks at some of the funniest skits. They were pretty funny. All right. Good Sunday morning. Big day. I'm sure you guys are up getting those chicken wings ready, prepping <laughs> for the big Super Bowl parties. Already. Already. It's, it's, it's a little weird. I'll be traveling, so I'll land uh, where I'm going to be going uh, about the first quarter. And I've already placed my order, so when I go from the airport, I'm going straight to the food. <laughs> no, That's it is true. That's how you do it. Absolutely oh, true. Absolutely. It. So it's going to be really fun, I think, today. But for you, it's going to be fun as well. The weather, mm. fabulous. Outside, not bad out there. The temperatures are comfortable, I think, in the 40s. Here's a shot down at uh, Moody Gardens, where they're still dismantling that Iceland exhibit. A lot's going on at Moody Gardens every day. Super, it's Super Bowl Sunday there every Sunday. They do a great job. 49 degrees inland at Bush and Continental. 54 degrees in Galveston at 54 degrees with a southwest wind at 6. We talk about that southwest when it comes from across the, the instead of the Gulf where we have the moist air, we have the drier air coming from the southwest, it heats
heats up faster. So that's what's going to be happening for us today. As far as on the water is concerned, seas are two feet. The bay is light chop today. The swell's a foot. Low tide was at 447. High tide's coming up at 117. I think we're going to be about 66 degrees today uh, on the island. The calf high, calf to thigh high surf. So be careful as you're heading out there. Hour by hour forecast then warming up not so quickly along the coast as it is inland. Uh, 59, 63 to 66 degrees. That should be southwest, not northwest, but 5 to 10 nonetheless. Uh, in terms of exact track radar, we talked about that area is where we're going to be focusing our attention. But for the Woodlands area, 57 to 68, there's that big jump from, from 10 o'clock to noon, a big jump in temperatures because we have drier air and the sun's going to be out. It's going to warm up pretty quickly to the mid 70s. Another look at that 10 day forecast and the timing of the rain that we expect and the colder temperatures that will be back in place by midweek. Guys. All right, thank you so much, Campbell. Now back to that breaking news we've been following since the beginning of the newscast out of Atascacita. Yeah, Precinct 4 deputy constables are working a homicide scene there at this hour. The deadly shooting happened sometime after 2 o'clock this morning near Treeline Drive and Atasca South Streets. Channel 2's Taisha Walker is live at the scene for us this morning with the latest. Good morning, Taisha. Sophia, good morning. Harris County Precinct 4 deputies have not been able to give us much information. We've even tried reaching out to dispatchers. Right now, we're waiting for homicide investigators who just got to the scene a short time ago, but most of them have been focusing their attention on that grassy area. If my photographer pushes in by that pole, you can see where that yellow tape is. We assume that that is where the shooting happened. We don't know much about the victim. We don't know if it was a male or female, but we know that the person was shot around 2 o'clock this morning and taken to a hospital hospital. Their status unknown. Um, right now, we're still working to gather more information from those homicide investigators as soon as we can get a chance to speak to them. Reporting live in Atascacita, Taisha Walker, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Taisha, thank you. New this morning, one person has died after police say he led officers on a high-speed chase and then crashed into a light pole near Missouri City. Started near 610 and Stella Link Road in southwest Houston. Police tried to pull over a car for a traffic stop. When the driver refused, a pursuit began. At some point, two passengers bailed out of the car and then were detained by police. The suspect, though, continued on, and investigators say he appeared to shoot at officers during that chase. The crash then happened at Highway 6 and FM 1092. He was rushed to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. A Bay City mother is behind bars after police found her seven-year-old daughter dead. 26-year-old Lauren K. Dean was at home on Bordeaux Drive on Friday when police conducted a welfare check and then found the child's body. Two younger children were also found in the home. They are both now safe. Dean is facing three felony charges for child abandonment. Now to Decision 2020 in Iowa. The final push is on before Monday's Democratic caucuses. Now candidates across the state using their last-minute strategies to sway voters. We start with Bernie Sanders' campaign. I'm Shaquille Brewster with the Sanders campaign in Indianola. We're not going to boo. We're classy here. No, We're no, classy. I'll boo. Boo. That moment coming just hours after Clinton accused Sanders of not doing enough to unite Democrats. But most who came out today weren't even aware of the controversy. Their main focus is making sure it's Senator Sanders who takes on Donald Trump. Our campaign is the campaign of energy. I'm Mike Memoli with the Biden campaign in North Liberty. I was to goodness believe character is on the ballot this, this year. Biden may not be drawing the biggest crowds, but he's counting on one-on-one -on -one connections like this to make the difference. Unlike his rivals, Biden blitzed the state all week, but he's also fending off their late attacks. I'm Von Hilliard with the Buttigieg campaign in Waterloo. Thank you. The 38-year-old, nearly unknown one year ago, with the chance to pull off an upset on Monday night. The former mayor from Indiana has campaigned over the last year that he is the one best positioned to win back these Midwest states in November. Uh, we need to do very well in Iowa. We're in it to win it. Senator Amy Klobuchar from neighboring Minnesota is also campaigning as the candidate best to win the Midwest. I'm Ali Vitale with the Warren campaign in Davenport. After days away, a triumphant return. Hello, Cedar Weber! Senator Warren blitzing all corners of the state today and tomorrow, soaking up every second she can with voters. Closing with a message of fight, plans, and perhaps most important to Democratic voters, unity. We will, we must come together as a party and beat Donald Trump. That is our job. 
puts us Warren hasn't led in a poll here since September. All right, stay with Channel 2 News for the very latest as we move closer to the Iowa caucus. Sion Rhodes is there. We'll have a report coming up ahead in our 8 o'clock hour. You can also look for her live reports on air and online at clicktohouston.com. President Trump spending the weekend in Florida ahead of the State of the Union and his expected acquittal in the Senate impeachment trial. Democrats, of course, still upset and say the president will get away with pressuring a foreign leader to meddle in the 2020 election. Democrats wanted to hear from former National Security Advisor John Bolton, as well as a couple of Republicans. Some Republicans say what the president did was inappropriate and even wrong, but was never an impeachable offense. This is the first impeachment trial in the history of the United States with no witnesses and documents. We should be trying to seek the truth, not bury it. Regardless of what happened over here, House Democrats didn't do their job over there. That vote, by the way, for acquittal is expected to come on Wednesday. As the Chiefs and 49ers prepare to take the field for Super Bowl 54, another team in Miami is getting ready for the big game as well, focused on something even more important than the Lombardi Trophy. Local, state, and federal law enforcement agencies, they're gearing up to make sure that everyone at the game stays safe. With officers and agents on the ground, fighter jets patrolling at 15,000 feet, and border patrol choppers scanning the area at lower altitudes, authorities say they are covering all their grounds to keep the public protected from any threats. We have the ability to, uh, to broadcast everything we see with the cameras that we have on board this aircraft near real time to anywhere in the United States. So far, no credible threats have been made to the game, but law enforcement says that they will not let their guard down. Another first for this year's big game, Super Bowl 54, the first with 5G, Hard Rock Stadium. The Miami airport and much of the city are being outfitted with the new technology. Fans will need a 5G device to connect to it. Verizon says they'll get download speeds of up to a gigabyte per second. Wow. Well, the accolades are coming in overnight after J.J. Watt tackles Saturday Night Live. Many of the posts of social media that we saw were super positive about his performance. The Houston Texans defensive end showed he's got the chops on and off the field. In his monologue, he focused on his team and family, but later in the show, he tackled some risky topics like this skit that showed him playing a father that has that important talk with his son about the birds and the bees. It was time to wax. I'm talking Mr. Miyagi, you know? Hey, son, I say, is that a Gatorade right there? What? Oh, yeah. You know what? Can you maybe not please do that? I'm going to need that right oh. about now. I've got to get some of that sweat back in me, you know? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> this morning, we want to know which skit you like the most from SNL. Was it the Madden skit, My Fair Bigfoot? or Robbie. There's lots of them. Go to our app or website at Click to Houston to vote in our Click to Vote poll. We'll have the final results in our 10 a.m. newscast. You've All got right. lots of time to vote. Lots of time there. And here's another look at another reaction to Watt's debut, this time from a theater right here in Houston. The Station Theater sent out this tweet congratulating Watt and inviting him to join their ranks when he gets back to Houston. All right, I love it. Well, it's one of the reasons that many of you watch the Super Bowl. Coming up next, the ads that will have you talking after the game. Now I can stop worrying about fine lines and focus on the offensive line. Yeah, what's up, Puff? Your skin looks amazing. With Olay Eye Black, my skin luminosity is off the charts insane. So easy to use, even guys can do it. You just grip it, grip it, and stick it. <laughs> <laughs> One of those skits. We're going to have you guys vote for the best SNL skit. You can go to our website, clicktohouston.com, and vote. All right, it is one of the biggest nights of the year for TV commercials, of course. That's right, the companies get big name stars. They spend millions of dollars and months to try to win over the viewers. NBC Sam Brock is in Miami with more. Come out, come out, wherever you are. The Super Bowl for advertisers is already underway. What kind of spots do you like that you think really connect with viewers? I love Dur the Doritos. The Doritos. <laughs> A dance-off between Sam Elliott and Lil Nas is an early fan favorite. 
with some competition from MC Hammer's Cheetos. You can't touch this. Takes on classic movie characters. Here's Mountain Dew Zero. And drag queens. I hope this doesn't give me helmet hair. Sabra trailblazing new ground with its slogan, Here We Go. With an average of 100 million eyeballs per Super Bowl, advertisers are sparing no expense. Engage the glutes. Yeah. Yes. Comedians Jimmy Fallon. Former SNL character Rachel Dratch. He's got smack pack! And Ellen. What's up? Play my favorite song. All making Super Bowl pitches. A 30 second spot runs around $6 million. I remember loving football from day one. Microsoft choosing to highlight history. Katie Sowers, offensive coach for the 49ers, will be the first woman to coach in a Super Bowl. I'm glad my daughter's old enough to see this and understand how significant it is. And WeatherTech is back with its golden mascot, Scout. And I'm a lucky dog. This time with a different message for fighting cancer. Their research has the potential to save millions of pets' lives. An emotional package of spots. The car? With some laugh-out-loud moments. I'll be there in a quibby. A what? Just in the nick of time. Less than 10 minutes. <laughs> and we checked, and it's uh, 100 million viewers, so technically 200 million eyeballs. Okay, yeah, that eyeball thing was, okay, what, 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 anyway. I think our favorites are the animals, right? We love the always, animals. Always, always. I've seen some of them in, in, in their entirety, and they're very nice. Good ones. Uh, un, not unlike these pictures, our click to mm -hmm. pins family. This is Book Girl from Umbo, Atascacita. Beautiful sunset shot yesterday. We love that. Here's another one from America in Galveston. Looking at that beautiful shot. One more. Here's, oh gosh, Tiki Island. Beautiful shots. Thank you. Click two pins, family. You never let us down. And then God beats you all <laughs> with our shot here. Kaplan Sinus Relief shot. That is a beautiful sunrise. Start to our day today. 47 degrees, southwest winds at six miles per hour. Still have some 30s in there. Conroe's at 34, Cleveland 37, Columbus 36, 51 in Lake Jackson, a little bit warmer along the coast, as you see. And the winds from the southwest, they will continue to be from the southwest for the foreseeable future here. Well, the upper level water vapor loop shows this dry air over us. That's why we're not getting any rain today but you see lots of moisture is poised to come in that pacific moisture is poised to come in and interact with the next front that's going to come through and that's what's going to give us our chance for rain here's where all the snow is right here this is going to be sliding down the colder air as well into the rockies where they expect a foot of snow like in salt lake city and those areas going forward here futurecast model shows that pretty good here going into tuesday and then we have the rain to the south of us on tuesday but what's going to happen is all of this colder air is going to slide down to the south and ahead of that We've got all of this moisture. We're going to be 78 degrees on Tuesday, remember? And so we've got a lot of warm, moist air. And all this is going to slide down to the south here. This model wants to keep the coldest farther to the north. Remember the last model I showed you showed that this colder air was much closer to us. And this one doesn't show uh, the freezing precip very early on Thursday either, but it does show some rain. Now, it clears out on Friday, and then the Saturday shows about a 20% chance, which the other model doesn't have, and I don't believe it either. But this also clears us out going into Monday. Monday, where there's a lot of rain on Monday the following week. For us, the Futurecast model looking at our temperatures today, about 74 degrees, and then overnight and tomorrow morning, we'll see a few more clouds coming into play as we start out in the 60s and, and upper 50s, and then we see the showers tomorrow afternoon as we see those temperatures in the low 70s for us. The hour by hour forecast for us takes us to about 74 degrees this afternoon, about 3 o'clock. Tomorrow morning, 56 to 60 degrees, and 56 is uh, along the coast, 60 degrees along the coast, rather. 56 degrees inland and by the afternoon we'll see some showers around 72 to 66 degrees here's a look at your 10-day forecast and we talked about that rain chance monday slight in the afternoon then tuesday wednesday colder temperatures and drier going into the next week i don't have rain chances here i could put 10 percent because of the chicken 20s with that model we saw i'm leaving it out for the moment and then we see the rain coming back on monday enjoy a little bit of uh, everything for yep. everybody thanks cam brown well, Super Bowl 54 is only hours away. So how are you watching the big game today? Coming up next, some food ideas for your big um. game watch party. We'll be right back. Go places. With the Super Bowl just hours away, the big game and big food just go together. So joining us now to talk a little about that, Juan Arellano with El Tiempo. And you were telling me your to-go orders are through the roof on insane, Super Bowl. Insane. Insane. <laughs> you know, and that's why we're here. You know, it's just uh, what else brings the, uh, the Houston uh, Super Bowl experience than El Tiempo? 
And the, yeah, and the, the fajitas, <laughs> the chips, the guacamole, where do we start? All right, so we'll start with the fajitas. Uh, again, we have, you know, our uh, $23.99 you know, party pack that we sell, you know, on, we do online. You could get it through Uber, uh, DoorDash, or Favor and just, you know, order on and, and, and it will they, they get delivered. You know, a little bit of El Tiempo at home. You know, you guys have been around here for a while. You, you, what, what, besides the fajitas, what's your most popular thing at Del Tiempo? Can't go wrong with queso. You oh, know. okay. Uh, one way with that we do our queso for, you know, an event like this that's coming up, you know, we just like to embellish a little bit with a little bit of beef fajitas. That steak in the, in the queso? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Can't go wrong with those beef fajitas. <laughs> And then the, the cilantro rice, is that what that is? Absolutely. And then the beans, the guacamole there in the middle. What, what makes the guacamole so good? Well, in El Tiempo, what we do is we take a little bit further. Mm -hmm. You know, we roast our garlic, you know, oh. so we get that nice, you know, sweetness out of it. Then what we do also is we roast our jalapenos on the wood-burning grill, which gives that smoky flavor in it. That is going a step further than I go with my guacamole. I got your jalapenos. Which come by and order them for us. <laughs> and what are these again? These are not your normal chips. These no, are just the tortillas. This is our flour, our handmade flour tortillas. What we do is we cut them and we, you know, flash fry them just like our, you know, regular corn tortillas. And they accompany the guacamole very well, and especially the, the chile con queso. What's your favorite dish at your own restaurant? My favorite dish? everything. <laughs> <laughs> He's not going to tell us his favorite dish. We'll, we'll work on him for next time. Absolutely. If you want to watch this again, you can uh, look on our website, clickdecent.com, after the show, under the community tab, and then, uh, like a lot of other people, you can get some to go from El Tiempo for the Super Bowl, and we'll be right back. I suck today! Nice! You are a pro, JJ! Thanks, man, but I mean, it, it kind of sounds like video game, J.J. Watt messes up a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's from the Madden skit that you can vote on if you want. On yeah, head to our website, clicktohouston.com. 49 degrees out there, so comfortable, not cold, cold, but uh, 55 degrees in Galveston, so I think we'll be okay with that, don't you? Uh, normal high, 64, will be about 74 degrees. I don't think anyone's going to complain about that either. Hour by hour forecast, there you go, 74, 68, 74. It's great. Beautiful. Oh, I love it. Oh. And thank you to Willie Geist yeah, for our so Sunday much. Today mugs. We're back at 8. Join us then.